Just about set. Oh, they're off in the St. James's Palace Stakes. Fox champion from stall 11 got out uh, very swiftly and begins to track over under Sylvester de Souza in the blue and white jacket. Circus Maximus with the white cap is racing prominently. Bell Rock in the sheepskin noseband wide at this stage and slipstreaming the grey Phoenix of Spain. Too darn hot, Frankie de Tori in a pink jacket is tracking the leaders as they link up with the round course. Uh, followed towards midfield by Royal Marine in the all blue of Godolphin, Scardu in the shades of blue tucked away against the running rail. Shaman is trapped fairly wide with the white sleeves. King of Comedy, Maroon Jacket has got a couple behind at this stage. And they're the stable mates Van Beethoven and the Irish Rover. So heading towards the halfway point in the St. James's Palace Stakes, and it's Fox Champion dictating here as they head towards the turn, closely attended by Circus Maximus. Couple of lengths away, then Phoenix of Spain, two Don Hot towards the inside. Bell Rock in the sheepskin nose band is out wide. Followed towards the top of the straight bar, more marine from Scardu, and then Shaman with the white sleeves and cap. Further back to King of Comedy, and then Van Beethoven and the Irish Rover is pushed along in last place into the straight heading down towards the last two and a half furlongs still Fox champion in front against the fence here goes Circus Maximus with a white cap Phoenix of Spain the grey is coming to challenge Frankie has pulled out to Don Hawk with a pink jacket launching his challenge four in a line as they head down towards the last 300 yards Circus Maximus struck the front here's to Don Hawk though with a storming run from off the pace King of Comedy and Scardu are also staying on very strongly to Don Hawk came upside Circus Maximus but he couldn't quite get past Finishing off strongly, King of Comedy, but Circus Maximus held on to win the St. James's Palace Stakes from King of Comedy, tied for third between Two Darn Hot and Scardu. Wow, what a finish to the St. James's Palace Stakes. Circus Maximus, who was added to this field for £45,000, and now we know why. Exactly. that. As I said, that's not a lot of money for them, but once you see them make an entry like that, they must have some inkling as to why they have done it. But have a look at that fellow, Comedy, Ooh, King, of Comedy. King of Comedy. He was storming home. Ready with every stride, King of Comedy nearly getting there. But what about this Circus Maximus? He's uh, had to drop back from the Derby trip and <laughs> showing he hasn't lost any of that zip. Wow, just wow. What a training <laughs> performance and what a good bit of placing by the whole Bally Doyle team. Um, I mean, having to have this horse supplemented for this race has obviously worked wonders. Uh, <laughs> to drop him back to a mile as well, you know, first time blinkers, we have to mention him as well. Ryan obviously made plenty of use of him because he knows he stays a little further as well and he never gave up. Look at that. Look how well the horse responded for every bit that Ryan is asking him to stretch and uh, yeah. Fair play to the winner. And you can see he's 10 to 1, his return King of Comedy at 4 to 1 is second, and 2 Don Hot Michael, third, the 2 to 1 favourite. Once again, he hasn't done much wrong, but he's just not quite good enough. Not quite good enough. And I think, as I said before, this is just as good as he is. There are no excuses this time. He looked as if he was coming to go past, but of course, Ryan Moore's horse is a mile and a half horse, right a mile and a half in the derby. So he stays. And when 2 Don Hot came at him, seeming as if he was going to go by, he found extra. Yeah, and a second win on the board for Ryan Moore second and Aidan O'Brien. Also, has already set the set the tone, hasn't he, Freddie? Yes, absolutely. And uh, Lord, this team is only getting better as the week goes on. Gosh, they really are. And let's have a look from this angle again, because I thought too Don Hot Freddie was a little keen early, but he was just on it. He wasn't pulling fiercely or anything. You've got to be a bit disappointed with him now, haven't you? Yeah, you'd have to be. Obviously, um, this was was the race they sort of uh, picked out after the Irish Guineas. And look, Frankie gave him a, a perfect ride. There was no excuse that way. He went there to, uh, to win his race, and he just wasn't good enough towards the end. Um, so there's no real excuse here today. No, nope. so second and third for trainer John Gosden, who will be ruining what might have been as King of Comedy beats his so-called better fancied stable mate and you can see that's him watching the race John Gosden he's as cool as ever isn't he and uh, you can see not showing a great deal of emotion but you can bet under that calm exterior there was a little bit going on inside Michael yeah as you could see there with the pursing of the lips he yeah. obviously was a little bit disappointed because just like me must have thought here comes two down hot he'll go past but he could not get past Circus Maximus another couple of strides Freddie King of Comedy might just have reeled him in 
do you know what? That was a, a very, very good run by him. He obviously hasn't been proven at Group 1 level just yet, and he is a Group 1 horse in the making. Before the season runs out, I'm sure uh, John Gosden will win a Group 1 with this horse. You know, he, He's going the right way, and that was a very, very good performance. Disappointing run by Phoenix of Spain, I have to say. Yeah. The winner was pretty much just in front of him, if not three quarters of a length in front of him the whole way, and he just didn't quicken up, did he? I don't know what, uh, if any lip readers are out there, what Brian's saying, but maybe he's saying, that was my 55th Royal Ascot winner. <laughs> just five behind Frank, you know. <laughs> yeah, he's catching up, isn't he? Anyway, whatever, it was reasonably hard work, but he's uh, given this horse a good ride as ever, and he's managed to, uh, to get up in the pouring rain here at Royal Ascot and win this St. James's Palace Stakes on Circus Maximus. Also, we saw in the derby, just coming to beat Frankie there on two darn hot. Frankie was on Circus Maximus in the derby, so he'll know a lot about that horse. And you can see the blinkers have certainly done the trick as well, Freddie. Yes, 100%. And uh, it does so many times and so often on, on these occasions that when a horse wears blinkers for the, ver for the very first time, they just changed, they just turned inside out, and this was the prime example for it at the highest level. Yep, you can see a rain-soaked Ryan Moore, but I bet he can't tell that at this moment of time as he wins his second race on day one here at Royal Ascot to go with his win in the Coventry Stakes a little bit earlier on on board Arizona. So well done if you're still in the selector. We've had a couple of slightly bigger priced horses winning today. A couple of more fancied horses as well here at Royal Ascot. And we've got a furiously difficult race coming up next because our next is the Ascot Stakes over the two and a half miles. And with this rain that's been falling, that's sure to be a real test. They're just taking the blinkers off this horse. And you can see, Freddie, the bridle's nearly coming off as well. And if you can see they're putting the brow band back over. But if the one thing you don't want to do at this stage is to lose the bridle. <laughs> no, that, that'll be bad. <laughs> anyway, they've got the situation back under control again. And the fanfare starts as this horse makes his way back up the tunnel and into the winner's enclosure, greeting another winner for the Aidan O'Brien team. And once again, people have flocked around this paddock, which is magnificent to see here, despite these inclement summer conditions.